Let's start with the basics. Shafts and hosels come in different sizes. Just as you would not try to put a square peg into a round hole, you must match the outer diameter of the golf shaft to the inner diameter of the hosel or tip adapter. I just used two terms you will hear many times in this course. ID, inner diameter, is the diameter of the hole in a hosel or head adapter tip. OD, or outer diameter, is the width or diameter of a golf shaft. There are three basic shaft and hosel sizes. 355, 335, and 370. This tip and hosel adapter gauge shows a few others you will not see often. 350, 390, and 410. 355, as noted on the gauge, is tapered. All others are parallel. Drivers and fairways are primarily 335. The hosel, or in most cases the tip adapter, is 335. You'll see the occasional 350 hosel on older clubs. In the not too distant past, cheap driver shafts had 350 tips to accommodate a wider range of manufacturing tolerance. 350 shafts were manufactured on the low side of the diameter range were not as likely to break as 335 diameter shafts. With a manufacturing tolerance of 0.015, the worst case 350 tip would not be less than 335. The worst case 335 tip would be 320. Those broke. The problem was solved by making the manufacturing target 350. Should you encounter a 350 driver or fairway and you are reshafting with a 335 shaft, you're going to need to insert a shim to stabilize There's a shim, and you're going to need to stabilize the shaft by putting that shim around that 335 tip so it will fit tightly into this 350 tip. This gauge is a very useful shop tool. It is made by Golf Mechanics, available in the U.S. from Golf Works. The pegs are used to determine club hosel ID, shorthand for inner diameter. The holes measure shaft tip outer diameter, or OD. When you have a match, you can glue the shaft into the hosel. So there's the 370 hole, this is the 370 shaft, and you see how it goes into the hole. When you don't have a match, you must make some adjustment to get the proper glue adhesion between the shaft OD and ID. This set of shaft rods is another method for checking hosel ID. And this universal gauge can be measured for grips and shaft tips. So here's the 335 hole, and you can see that this 370 shaft won't fit. But here is the 370 hole, and I am a snug fit into the hole. Irons and iron shafts are commonly made with both 355 taper and 370 parallel tips. In this illustration, a parallel head hosel and a taper head hosel are shown. You can see how the appropriate parallel and taper shafts fit into those heads. When we reverse the shafts, you can see the 370 parallel shaft will not fit into the tapered hosel. The 350 tapered shaft will fit into a 370 hosel but it will not stay straight. This is a problem. The large 370 shaft will not fit into the 355 hosel, keeping you from making that mistake. But the 355 shaft will fit into the 370 hosel. If you do not pay attention to the loose fit, the head will eventually come off. Tapered 355 iron shafts are sold as sets. They are designed and manufactured to have a specific shaft for example, a six iron shaft to be inserted in a six iron head. The lengths of the shafts are graduated 
in half inch increments. Parallel shafts are the same length and bend profile for the entire set. The club maker trims the tip according to the manufacturer's instructions to create stiffness and the butt to create the set length gradients. There is a method called frequency matching that will be covered in another course. If you want to put a taper 355 shaft into a 370 hosel, you put a shim on the shaft and then glue it into the hosel. To put a 370 shaft into a 355 hosel, you must ream the hosel. This is easy with the right tools on forged hosels. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to ream a cast head. I'll demonstrate reaming in a later course. Today's hybrids are primarily 370 hosels. I have not seen a 350 hybrid hosel in years. You should be aware they exist. Those that I have encountered are made from a material that is too hard to ream. I'm not aware of any 350 hybrid shafts currently offered. You might think a solution is to sand a 370 shaft to fit a 350 hosel. This is not recommended and you should make the customer aware this is not safe and therefore you will not do this. As you can see with this current hybrid, the 370 tip is a perfect fit for hybrid shafts. This brings up an interesting option. You can use tapered iron shafts with shims to match the shafts used in the iron set. Another option is to use 370 parallel iron shafts in hybrids. I use parallel steel on occasion with strong golfers. Steel shafts cost much less money than heavy carbon fiber and are inherently low torque. Before we get further into demonstrating technique, I'm going to introduce you to the tools you need in your shop. We need to measure club lengths, cut shafts, measure club balance, weight, sand tips, glue, cure, and finally, check loft and lie. In the next few episodes, we'll look at golf shaft tools. I'm not going to show you every tool that's available, but I will show you what I use. You can explore the range of shop tools available at different prices at Golf Mechanics and Golf Works. As golf club builders and fitters, we need to understand the golf shafts we work with. The most comprehensive source for this knowledge is Golf Shaft Reviews. For a small annual fee, you'll have access to shaft stiffness, torque, weight, and balance data, and, most important, the EI bend profiles, the same bend profiles that are used by golf shaft engineers when they design and manufacture golf shafts. The measurements from my lab let you compare any shaft to any other shaft using the same measurement protocol. Golf Shaft Reviews also offers professional subscriptions that provide more detailed shaft data. If you want to understand golf shafts from the detailed perspective of a golf shaft engineer, take a look at Golf Shaft Reviews.